Anyone who knows me can tell you that I love Harry Potter. I got the first book as a gift for my birthday, my 11th birthday coincidentally, right before I would have been eligible to attend Hogwarts. You can imagine my disappointment when I didn't find a letter-bearing owl in my living room that summer. Anyway, these books were a huge part of my childhood, so it stands to reason that one of my favorite villains of all time would be Lord Voldemort. And not just because we share a first name. But as I get older, I'm forced to wonder, was he really all that good a villain? I mean, the internet makes an excellent point. He did kind of fail to take over a high school. He was thwarted by plucky children. I feel like the best way to determine the answer is to weigh the pros and cons. What does he do poorly, and what does he do well? Is he actually an idiot, or were the odds unfairly stacked against him? Well, let's take a look. First, to understand what made Voldemort so terrifying, you have to understand something about the wizarding world. People always joke around about how insane adults are allowing their children to participate in downright lethal activities like the sport of Quidditch, where they fly around hundreds of feet in the air on broomsticks while two cannonballs rocket around and try to wreck their prebubescent shit. But we only look at this from our non-magical perspective, so of course it looks deadly. The biggest danger in Quidditch, I imagine, would be falling off your broom. But remember, the first spell students are taught at Hogwarts is Wingardium Leviosa. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. A spell that makes things float in the air. That lesson takes place before the year's first Quidditch match, so literally every single person in these stands can tell gravity to go fuck itself. As far as getting railed by an errant bludger goes, this lady, the school nurse, can fix a broken bone by just prodding you with her magic stick. I'm fairly certain one of these twerps could plow into a wall of a castle at 200 miles an hour, and if this lady reached them before they got cold, they would still make potions class. In a world where eating a brick at terminal velocity is a mere inconvenience you can walk off, dangerous takes on an entirely different meaning. So imagine, then, just how deadly a man would have to be for a society of people that send 14-year-olds to antagonize dragons for their amusement to be stricken with fear to the point where they refuse to say his name. Voldemort is also a genius when it comes to magic. He was the top of his class at Hogwarts, grasping complex spells with ease, including the dark magic behind the creation of Horcruxes, so well that he created his first rite out of school at the age of 17. For anyone not familiar with a Horcrux at this point, you take an object and place a piece of your soul into it. As long as the object remains intact, you are immortal. And Voldemort has seven of them. The best equivalent to a Horcrux I can think of really only makes sense to those who play Dungeons & Dragons, but it's basically a Lich's phylactery. Normally, the final big bad in a lot of D&D &D games is a Lich. A Lich with a single phylactery. Imagine having to deal with one that had seven. D&D &D players can easily imagine how terrifying that is, and that is exactly what Voldemort is. On top of that, even taking away his immortality, he's a powerful spellcaster with an army at his disposal. He's mastered all kinds of spells, including Avada Kedavra, the Death Curse. You can't block it, you can't stop it, and if it hits you, you just die. No saving throw, bro! Just dead! Even the man's name is a spell. He imbued his name with magical power so that any time someone said it, he was immediately aware of it and their location. Most wizards are capable of teleporting, so you can see how this would be bad. This led to the fear of speaking his name, because imagine, you're an early member of the Order of the Phoenix, just starting out the fight against Voldemort. You sit down at a table to discuss strategy, and someone says, Alright, so what do we do about Voldemort? Suddenly the man is standing on your table, indiscriminately launching death magic at everybody. He does have a few issues, however. Namely, his total dependence on magic. He's a master of magic, descended from Salazar Slytherin, one of the greatest wizards of all time. So he believes all things non-magical are beneath him. He has the power to shape reality around himself, and damn it, he's gonna use it. This is what leads to his downfall when he first fails to kill Harry as a baby. He tries to use the death curse on him, and the spell rebounds due to Harry's mother sacrificing her life for him, destroying Voldemort's body and forcing him to live out the next 13 years as a spirit. But but why though? Using the Death Curse on an infant seems equivalent to hunting rabbits with a rocket launcher. It's totally unnecessary. Infants are squishy and vulnerable. 
There are a million more mundane ways Voldemort could have handled the situation that wouldn't have triggered the friggin' love shield, but no. None of those were good enough for Lord can't perform simple tasks without a fucking arcade ritual of Voldemort. You could have filled up a bathtub, set the baby inside, and then left him unattended for a couple of minutes. That would have done the trick. But no, you had to go with... Come, my minions, rise for your master. Let your evil shine. I know what you're thinking. Oh, he was trying to make a horcrux. Fair enough. But as far as I know, making a horcrux requires a death. It doesn't give specifics on how you have to kill them. I am the Dark Lord Gunji Stag. I'm going to start a reign of terror that will bring the magical world to its knees for a thousand years, but first, I must defeat this infant. In the end, Voldemort attempts to take over Hogwarts, and that's where he's defeated for good. People always laugh about it. <laughs> Voldemort sucks. He can't conquer a high school. But when you think about it, everyone in that high school has access to the same weapons Voldemort and his army are using. Man, the Harry Potter series is the NRA's wet dream. Crazy magical dictator and his death squad show up at a high school and are turned back because literally every single person in the building is packing heat. Actually, even then, Voldemort is winning. He almost succeeds and is in fact only defeated because he essentially loses a shell game. A shell game where he didn't get to watch the guy at the table move the shells. Shit gets complicated, so I'll try and sum it all up. Dumbledore has an ancient artifact called the Elder Wand, an incredibly powerful wand that, according to magic, belongs to the person who defeated the last bearer of the wand. Okay, cool. Sounds straightforward, right? Voldemort knows that, spoilers, Snape killed Dumbledore. So Voldemort kills Snape and boom, he's now the owner of the Elder Wand, right? He has it and uses it in the final fight against Harry, but when he goes to kill Harry, it backfires and kills him instead. This is because, unbeknownst to Voldemort, Snape killed Dumbledore, but it was Draco Malfoy who disarmed him, technically making it Draco who defeated Dumbledore. Harry later defeats Draco in a fight, so at the time of the final confrontation with Voldemort, Harry is the actual owner of the Elder Wand, even though he's never actually laid hands on it. And since the wand refuses to kill its true master, Voldemort dies. Literally, the only thing that defeats Voldemort is a fucking magical loophole and blind luck. When it comes right down to it, I have to say that Voldemort is still a great villain. The man is a terrifying force of nature, making an entire society of people capable of shaping the fabric of reality to their collective whims bow down and fear him. His biggest issues are his hubris and reliance on magical power for everything, as far as I'm concerned. Every loss he suffers is because of bad intel. He loses his body and marks Harry as the one destined to defeat him because of prophecy. A prophecy that he only got to hear half of, relayed secondhand by a spy. A major part of the prophecy is that Voldemort would personally mark his rival. The man is smart. I'm fairly certain if he knew that part of it, he would have just sent some Death Eaters to kill every baby that came even vaguely close to the description in the prophecy and stayed home. He takes over the entire magical world and has only stopped at Hogwarts because A, it has the largest concentration of powerful magic users anywhere in the world to fight against him, and B, he comes across a loophole that would give a lawyer a headache. Voldemort will always be one of my absolute favorite bad guys, and I would be willing to go so far as to say he is one of the most terrifying villains to exist, but the deck is so stacked against him that this absolute titan of evil ends up falling at the hands of some determined teenagers. Teenagers who also have crazy magic powers. I've been Tom, and thanks for watching Tom again.